Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I do want to say this vlog might start out a little bit stressful, but it should get better. It, at least that's what I'm telling myself. Because tomorrow I am going away for three weeks. Very, very excited, but it has been one of the most stressful things trying to get everything sorted for it. it just generally overworking myself the past couple of months so that I have content going up while I'm away and to make sure my vlogs of Halloween all went without a hitch. All things I put on my own shoulders, by the way. This is all my doing. But all of that is now pretty much done. I have filmed everything I need to film. I've edited everything I need to edit. I've scheduled everything I need to schedule for when I go away. So I definitely feel a bit better about that. But yeah, I do fly tomorrow and I haven't even started packing yet. In fact, I haven't even taken the suitcase out of the wrapping. <laughs> I don't even have my spending money yet. I don't even know if I have everything I need. I don't even know if my print is gonna work because I need to print out like my visas and confirmation and stuff. And yeah, I don't know if my print is gonna work. I haven't tried it in months. But yeah, shout out to my mum for getting me a new suitcase because I broke the last one when I was in Japan last year trying to get this suitcase closed because of all the things that I'd been buying while I was there. So yeah, probably start packing to, no, not probably, I need to. I need to. My flight is in literally like 24 hours from now. You know, there's so much I still need to do. Don't worry, like this will still be a bookish size of life vlog. I'm still gonna be trying to read. Uh, I said that last year, didn't I, when I went to Japan and then that didn't really happen, did it? I have eight flights in total in this whole vlog. So that's like plenty of time for reading. So if you are wondering, Gavin, where are you going? Like, what's going on? I am going to Australia and Egypt. Australia is a trip that I'm taking so that I can visit a couple of friends who I've known for 10 years now. It's our 10 year friendship anniversary. We met at uni and we lived together for a couple of years at uni as well. And I love them to pieces. I cannot wait to see them again. So that's why I'm going to Australia. Yeah, Melbourne first. And then from Melbourne, I'm going to Egypt. Now, Egypt is my Trover trip that I had planned since June last year. Hello, Gavin from the future here. And I do need to tell you that I'm gonna have to split this video into two. I hope you don't mind. I imported all of the footage from both Australia and Egypt. So yes, I'm all home now, I'm, I'm safe. There may have been a couple of times when my life was in question, I'm kidding. But I did wanna tell you that with this intro already being filmed and everything, I don't wanna confuse you. So I am essentially calling this my Gavinissance tour. And the first video will be the Australian leg of my tour. And that's what this video is gonna be, you know, with all the book shopping in Melbourne, seeing my friends in Melbourne, wine tasting, just having so much fun, and also reading as well. Don't worry, there are some book reviews in this too, as well as a really big book haul. And then in a few days' time, I will post the Egypt leg of my tour. So that's essentially how I'm splitting this video. I do apologize for the length of it. Yeah, I imported everything, 1,400 clips and eight hours of footage. And I was like, that's way too much for one video. And you're probably thinking, Gavin, you've done worse. I mean, yes, I have. But as part of the Givinison's tour, I kind of want to give myself a little bit of a break and a little bit of a breather. So yeah, it's going to be split into two. But anyway, back to the video. I'll see you soon. Bye. Actually, I think it was May. I think I started planning it in May. But it went live last year. It sold out straight away. And I have an amazing bunch of travellers who are coming with me on this trip. And I cannot, cannot wait to meet them. So yeah, I'll be hosting that after Melbourne. I'll be hosting my very second Trover trip. I will put a link to the Japan vlog that I did when I hosted my Trover trip in Japan. And if you do end up loving the look of me being in Egypt with so many amazing bookish friends and people who I've met through Booktube and who have joined the trip, I do have one more Trover trip that still has spots left. I have a visit to Norway in August 2025. So I will leave a link to that down in the description box if you fancy it. And that looks amazing as well. So if you do love the look of this, if you have been a little bit like, hmm, I really want to do it, but I'm kind of a little bit nervous. I hope to rectify that with this video. Now I did mention a potential TBR for my trips away during my end of year TBR video. That should have gone up by now. <laughs> Fingers crossed, I hope. And I do have like a fairly tiny selection of books I kind of want to take on the plane with me and in my like hand luggage. I want to see if there's any good books at the airport. Just because like, I'm struggling to pick like what I want to actually read, I don't know what I want to read. Well, apart from these three books, I really want to read these three books. Because yeah, I'm barely gravitating towards anything. I don't know what's wrong with me. Maybe it's because like my brain is like, Gavin, you're going on vacation, don't read. You've read enough, don't you think? Then I'm like, shut your mouth. So one of the books I'm going to be reading is What the River Knows by Isabella Banez. This is my buddy read for Egypt with my Trover Trip travellers. We are all reading this before we get there. And then we're going to have like a little bit of an in-person book club discussion about it. So I'm very excited because it's The Mummy Meets to death on the Nile and I will let you know more about what it's about when I get to reading it and I definitely will begin to read it because I have to <laughs> and then I also have The Beetle by Richard Marsh a gothic classic
classic about an ancient creature from ancient Egypt and there is like a politician who is the main character and I think he is haunted by the beetle. Very excited for that and then I also have Butter by Isako Yukuzi. Just one that I've really had my eye on and just so excited to read. I think it's a thriller about a chef who's been incarcerated, gives her recipes to somebody who asks for them and then a person makes the recipes at home and then they start a change I think. So that's like the initial three books I want to read. There will definitely be more because I really do want to read more. There's so much time. I mean I've got eight planes that I'm taking in total throughout the entire thing, then that is definitely plenty of time to, to read and also plenty of time to sleep. Although I can never sleep on planes, never. I will say if you are booking flights, do not use GoToGate. Do not use them. I use them for all of my flights. And on my journey to Melbourne, one of the flights got delayed two days and obviously that couldn't work for me. And they were supposed to put me on new flights. And then two weeks later, which was two weeks before I was leaving, they said, oh, sorry, these aren't available anymore. Let's try these flights instead. And I'm like, I've got two weeks before I need to go. You said that these were my new flights. Like, what's the holdup? So I said, no, cancel it. I'm gonna have to book them myself. And then they wouldn't give me a refund or anything. They wouldn't let me know what was going on. And I was on the live chat for weeks trying to get a, an answer. And then I decided to go through PayPal and put in a claim, put in a case, which I just got an email from PayPal to say that I won my case. They ruled in my favour. So I will definitely be getting a refund for those flights that go to gate messed up. Like they were supposed to be cancelled. I'd be getting check-in texts for the flights that were supposed to be cancelled. So now I'm really worried about going to the airport tomorrow and the person being like, oh, you got like six flights to take on my, I should only have three. So hopefully that hasn't like messed anything up. And I've just been an anxious mess about it all for weeks now. It has been weeks upon weeks upon weeks since Gotake kind of like was messing me around. So they didn't even cancel my flights that they were supposed to. They were waiting until my flights had happened so that I don't get any refund at all. They were telling me to wait until the 5th of January, 2025. But I was like, mm, but my flights are in two days. Like, I, I, what do you mean wait until January? to cancel them, are you kidding? So yeah, it doesn't matter, I, I won my case. Still a little bit anxious about the airport tomorrow, but I'm sure I'll be fine. I went all the way to the shopping center today to pick up my travel money, except I realized I don't have my debit card because I gave it to my mom. So she's coming later so she can give me it, so we can go back to the shopping center, get my money, come back home. I'm also doing reading sprints in like an hour. Oh, my boiler started leaking yesterday as well. I <sighs> just, oh. I need to breathe. I need to breathe. I've been working every single day for the past two and a half months every single day, from waking up to going to bed, filming, editing, reading, uploading, doing live shows, doing videos for while I'm away, doing this, doing that, oh my God. I just wanna, I, I wanna break, I wanna break. So this is gonna be my break-ish, cause I'm still gonna be filming. I'm gonna be filming a vlog, that's gonna be so much fun. Cause we are in what I call the Gavinissons era, okay? Like I have been having such struggles, like 2023 was a shit year, 2023 was awful, but 2024 is the Gavinissons. I am back. And even though I am obviously stressed and anxious right now, I am happier than I was last year. You know, like I, I am in a much better place, literally and figuratively, because I am in a new house and everything. So I am so happy with the progress of, you know, everything that's happened since last year. So I do feel like this is the Gavinissons. I keep getting tested, obviously, with like things like the boiler leaking, the scammy website, flights being changed and delayed, being told I won't get refunds, shit like that, you know? But the positives outweigh the negatives. And I'm choosing to focus on the positives, not the negatives. So with me having said that, please do give this video a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you haven't already. And yeah, this is gonna be hopefully one of the most adventurous and one of the most fun say so live vlogs that I've done so far and I hope you will come along with me for the ride. Mm -hmm. I miss you. Oh, I love you. Oh, I love you. You too boo. You too boo. You too boo.
swore to me that we'd never be born. I'll follow you to the ends of the earth, darling. Let's hope it never gets to that. I love the morning sun. One thing we can always remember. I got a story to tell. I've made it to Melbourne, and look, at least I made it. My baggage didn't. <laughs> well, other than the baggage that I carry with me at all times. I mean, like, my actual physical luggage. It's still in Shanghai. It is still in Shanghai. Mm -hmm. You know how I was, like, talking about all of these things that were just trying to prevent me from either coming to Melbourne, coming to Egypt? So many things were just like, nah, 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 nah. Gavin, you know your place. You know your place in the world and you stay there. So I have managed to get here, so you know I've definitely made it. But let me tell you a little bit about my flights and stuff. So I did take only about an hour flight from Newcastle to Amsterdam, which wasn't too bad. And I did take, well, it was more like a, an 11 hour flight from Amsterdam to Shanghai. And then another like 11 hour flight from Shanghai to Melbourne. And I didn't sleep at all. I can't sleep on planes. I can't do it. I envy the people who can sleep on planes because it couldn't be me. I even tried as well to read butter and I totally forgot as well that my flights are overnight flights, which means they're gonna turn all those lights off on there, little fuckers. So everything was really dark and you know, you do have the light for your seat, but I turned my light on for my seat and it illuminated the entire row. And I wasn't about to do that to those poor people who wanted to sleep. So I didn't really get that much of butter read. I'm only on page 127. 127. I'm really liking this so far though. This does follow Rika and she is trying to get, well, the inside scoop from a convict who murdered a few gentlemen, or at least she's said to have murdered a few gentlemen, and she's allured them in with her delicious food. That convict is called Monaco Kaji, and they have meetings every now and then at this prison. Rika talks to Kaji and asks about like recipes and stuff, and they talk about food. There's so much food talk on this, it made me so hungry. You will hear the word moist quite a lot, and you do get a little bit of like repetition sometimes with some of the, like the flavors and the way that the body reacts to those flavors. So at the minute, I'm not really saying a whole lot of like, cause I thought this was a bit of a thriller kind of thing and it could still go that way, but it's been more like a, an examination on humans and like our fascination on true crime and also like misogyny. There's like quite a few instances of the main character talking about misogyny and trying to combat that with her own way of thinking and the way that the convict as well, the way that she sees herself and the way that people see her. And you know, there's this whole great thing about like the commentary of this that I'm really enjoying right now. It's like not scary, it's not like thrillery or anything just yet, but no, I'm liking it. But again, not a whole lot to say because I am 127 pages into this. So I did manage to get that read in like the, f you know what, I read on the first plane from Newcastle to Amsterdam for like an hour and that was about it. That was about it. I read in some of the airports as well, but not a lot. So then I get to the seven hour layover in Shanghai and I'm falling asleep. I'm just falling asleep. I'm just that exhausted and tired, but I get on my plane, still don't sleep a wink. <laughs> get to Melbourne, get to the airport, and I'm waiting for my baggage to come through. And it doesn't come through. And I'm starting to panic a little bit because I'm like, well shit, like I need these clothes. I need them not just for now, but for Egypt as well, which is right after. So I go to the baggage people and they tell me that it was taken in Shanghai by security because I left a camera battery in there, which is fine in Newcastle and Amsterdam, but China have much stricter policies when it comes to batteries. And so I did have some camera batteries in that luggage. And because of that, they, they seized it. They seized my baggage. So it should be coming tomorrow. Fingers crossed, it should be coming tomorrow, and I need to go to the airport to pick it up because they can't send it to the hotel because it was a security risk. <laughs> I'm like, what else do you want to throw at me, huh? What else? Hopefully that was like the last bad thing to happen, like the last thing that's like trying to test my patience. 
after everything like just trying to get here in the first place and I'm sure I will be I'm sure I will be but it does mean that I have had to buy loads of new clothes <laughs> well I didn't have to buy like loads of new clothes but I panicked a little bit okay I've got things that I need to to wear good clothes for today and tomorrow so I, I needed to do this I, I I wasn't sure what to do. Look, I'm terrible at fashion. Oh my gosh, you do not know me for my fashion. You know me for my books. But I have managed to check in and it's like 3 p.m. now or something like that. And I haven't even showered yet or anything. I haven't even changed my clothes. I thought I would show you in all of my disgusting glory so you could see what I've been looking like for the past two days. Ugh. But let me give you a tour of the uh, apartment, which is so nice. So come on through, come on through. Isn't that so nice? Isn't that so nice? Like, yes, it does have like a balcony wraparound thing going on there. A little dining area, lovely. A lovely little living room area, lovely. I'll show you the balcony in a second. Bedroom. It's all you need. It's all you need. Wardrobe and the mirror. Mirror. So that's not looking too bad. Yeah, like some of these tables could do with like maybe throwing out because they're just. I feel like they're just a little bit too old now, you know what I mean? I just love these chairs. These chairs are so nice. Also, it's just like, what is this? But I do think that's like stained into it now, so you can't really get it off. Sorry, anyway, we're not here to complain, are we? We're not here to complain. Just love the dining room area. Uh, so I'll show you outside. I mean, it isn't the best view. We've got a freaking school right there. But look at it. I still love it. Going around here as well. My apartment. <laughs> not bad, not bad. So I do only have my carry on bag, which I did have like, you know, toothpaste, a toothbrush some shower gel, but I don't have shampoo because that was in my big suitcase. So I'm gonna have to quickly nip to a 7-Eleven, get some shampoo so I can go in the shower, get ready for tonight, whatever that may be. I don't know what my friends have planned. They said it's gonna be like some kind of little surprise thing and to dress more casual. This is not my original outfit, but I'm gonna have to go with it. Ah, hopefully it looks okay. Small casual with my little belly. <laughs> Bay roll. <laughs> You get that. <laughs> That's amazing. Shit. Excuse me. Okay, I don't have much time before I have to leave. Like, I literally need to leave in five minutes. I mean, I probably should have left by now, but I have had my first sleep. My voice might be sounding a little bit weird. I don't know why. Like, I don't feel like I'm getting a cold and I don't feel sick, but I don't know why. My voice is feeling a little gravity right now. My friends, Grace and Ellen, they surprised me with going to see Beauty and the Beast in theatre. And I, well, I've never seen Beauty and the Beast in theatre before, so that was amazing. It was like such a nice surprise. Like, they know me too well. Back in second year of uni for my birthday, they surprised me with Disney on Ice. And it's like, okay, we've got a theme. Yeah, I didn't really want to get my phone out too much last night because I just want to live in the moment, you know? Like, I'm finally seeing my friends after so long. So I probably didn't get as much B-roll as I usually do or anything like that, which is fine. But yeah, I just wanted to hang. Okay, this is the fit check for today, which obviously I don't look the best. I had to wrap this all last minute. But I'm on my way to a winery with Ellen and Grace and their friends, and I cannot, cannot wait. A winery! <laughs>
currently in the lobby of my hotel and I just noticed on this bookshelf, Red Nile. Red, Red Nile. <laughs> Biography of the world's greatest river and I'm going to see this, this river soon. I'm thinking, ooh, should I give this a read? I imagine I can borrow any of these and take them to my room. Pretty cool bookshelf. Pretty cool. Like, what do I, what do I want to get? Uh, hmm. Got some Percy Jackson books. Um, oh, I mean the Maze Runner books. Should I try and binge these? Do a reading vlog reading Maze Runner for the first time? <laughs> uh, Jojo Moyes. Okay, never read a Jojo Moyes before. Maybe this, when we were orphans. I already have books upstairs and I haven't even read. I'm just on my way to a coffee shop, it's like seven o'clock in the morning and there's one open nearby. Yes, good morning. Yeah, I need a coffee. I need a coffee this morning. Drank quite a bit yesterday. I'll let you know how yesterday went. Drank quite a bit. I need coffee and I need coffee right now. What, any coin? I think any coin, and then any you put coin. it in the little slot. Because I have like these coins. <gasps> the higher the better. Does it mean I get a better fortune? Maybe. <laughs> put them all in there, I don't know. One or two. Put it in. And then you see the wheel. Spin that wheel. Yes. Yeah. Give it a good spin. <gasps> spin that wheel. Yeah. And then it never stops. <laughs> And then whatever it lands on. Oh, Ten years later. Ten years later. What's your guess? Seven times the number, so there's seven. Base seven. Base seven. Base seven. Base seven. Base seven. Zero. zero. Seven. So now we need to find zero. So you all these have numbers on. Oh, that's oh, that's the same. Oh, adventure. See, it's adventure, oracle of adventure. Adventure, take a risk, a chance for this will enhance joy and romance. <gasps> Follow your heart for bliss and to impart, and then an amazing adventure will start. That's perfect. <gasps> and that's a little bewitchment that you can do to manifest this. You can hide the adventure, that's so relevant to right now. That is so relevant. Kind of is, I'm on an adventure. Cool, you can get this, you can buy the spell that goes oh, with it. Oh, that's right there. Oh, did you, get, did you just get it? Oh, I wish I could just get it. I have to buy it. That's so cute, you have to it's buy so it. And it's got all the stuff in it to do the little spell. That's Yay! <laughs> oh my god! Wow! Wow! Oh! Oh my god, this is so cute! How cute is this? Ooh. Look at that! Look at the little lovely flowers! Enter! Oh my god, this is so massive! Oh no. Oh, all down here? Yeah. Oh, gotta walk. I always feel weird. Like, I got like, weird legs when I do this. <laughs> yeah, I feel like this should be moving. <laughs> yeah, this makes me feel weird.
<laughs> Are you gonna so show weird. all of your books? Yeah, probably. But I'm just like let's go through it. Yeah, okay. Hi guys. Uh welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've actually met you guys haven't met Ellen or Grace no, at all. Which is a crime. It is. Fantasy. I mean you're so far away, but Grace is over there. <laughs> this is Ellen. This is Ellen. And yeah, I haven't told them about yesterday, because I was a little bit too tired yesterday. Yeah. yeah. But like I haven't informed you about the the wine tour. Yeah. That which was amazing. It was so fun. I met so many new friends. They were so nice. I can't remember the exact place it was called, but it was like it out in the middle of nowhere really. The whole tour? It was yeah. in the Yarra Valley. Yarra Valley, okay. Yarra Valley. I'll remember that. Yeah, outside of Melbourne. Which was beautiful. Very nice. Like I genuinely could see myself living here. Yeah. It's so beautiful. The weather was great. The vibes were good. Yeah, all Company good vibes. Company was great. Company was great. I yeah, mean, some people would skip songs I like, but <laughs> other than Someone that. Someone didn't let us play espresso on the bus. Somebody did not like a Sabrina cocktail. Like. <sighs> Apart from that. <laughs> Bit of a crime. Yeah. <laughs> but we have been shopping today. We have. We went out into oh. like Melbourne City yeah. just to you know, get a bit more of the culture and have a little bit of a drink. <laughs> Recover have, from yesterday. Yeah, yeah mix. because I obviously haven't spent enough money here. Um, but I did get some food, uh, some books. I have a haul. And we have a blind date. And we have a blind date. We'll, we have we'll a blind leave date. that to the end. We'll do the whole thing. We will. We will. This is a great haul. This yeah. is like so many books and so many ones that I probably wouldn't have picked up on my own. Yeah, potentially. Because There's a few that I kind of forced you to do. Yeah, because <laughs> like Powerless and Guild, I was a little bit on the fence about, but I know they are quite popular. Yeah. So I, I do really want to read these, but I think the main three, this trio right here, I'm, I'm down for. I'm there for. What's the front one? Oh, yeah. yeah Everyone yeah. this Christmas has a secret. Yes. I we all know I love me some Benjamin Stevenson. It's amazing. And then this is for the Literary Table Club as well, An Academy for Lies by Alexis Henderson. I'm very excited. It's Dark Academia, and I haven't read enough of that genre yeah. to like really get a full sense on like what's supposed to be the right vibe for it. But I'm there for it. It's gonna be fun. And then Before the Coffee Gets Cold, which everyone's heard about as well. But I'm just excited to get into the blind date. Because mm -hmm. I've done so many of them now. Yeah, you've done a lot. I'm I've done a few. few. I'm scared. Is this one mine? Yeah, it is. <laughs> yes. The only thing that I have on mind is I'm moody, sweaty, and sun drenched. <laughs> That's kind of scary. What more could I want? But like, I also, I could do with a little bit more info. Like, I just kind of, I, I just want to know. It's quite a small book as well. Like, it, it's yeah, thin. It's I mean, what if it's before the copy gets sold? <gasps> It looks nah, pretty much... That's not moody, sweaty, and sun-drenched. I can promise Do you not think? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. I mean, you've read it. I've so read it. You've read not, it. There's nothing sweaty about it. Okay. So okay. If it is, then that's really misleading. <laughs> <laughs> it's straight to night nine. Oh, night... Well, actually, that's probably from the, the bookshop we went to. What was this bookshop called again? Oh, Dimmocks. Dimmocks. Which so, is like the bi the biggest bookshop in Australia. So it's like the Waterstones of yeah, Australia. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. The Blackwells. The Blackwells. 
some might say. Oh, God. Oh, is it? Can you do it? Oh, no. I can't say that. Oh, I, I say blue. Oh, no. <laughs> I say blue. If it is, that's hilarious. No, it's not. It's not. It's different. It's not. Hot milk. Sweaty. <laughs> <laughs> By Hot Deborah milk. Levi, and it was shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize in 2016. <gasps> Can you read the? Um, it doesn't really have a summary. It's all. Oh, they're just saying. Is it's, that not? Uh, today I dropped my laptop on the concrete floor of a bar built on the beach. My laptop has all my life in it and knows more about me than anyone else. So I'm saying is that if it's broken, so am I. Oh, what does that mean? That doesn't give a lot away. What does that mean? That's kind of fun though, going into it literally having no idea. Yeah, it's just it's all it's just all anecdotes and, and reviews. Like. That's kind of fun. Yeah, but what is I, it? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> like what, this, are what are you? Okay. Is there anything like on the first page? Does it have like a little um, description or anything? That's still more no. more reviews. It doesn't want to tell me. Wow, Deborah, why are you being so? Oh, but it's set in Spain, 2015. Okay, okay. nice. Could be a good setting. I'm excited. Well, oh, we're no better off. It's basically still may as well have a it. Yeah. Sign. yeah. <laughs> <Which one laughs> it's it true. It's true. That's now, right. now I'm excited for yours. What does yours say? Mine says, I'm quirky and full of mystery with a sassy sense of humour. Mm. I feel like I like main characters that are a bit sassy. Yeah. That's quirky. why I like Powerless. Okay. Like she's a bit kind of sassy and quirky and fun. Yeah. Ellen has like such a good knowledge on like very popular books and you've read, you've read quite a lot. Just fantasy smart. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a, a beautiful genre. That is the greatest genre of all time. And it was from Mary Martin Bookshop. Oh yeah, Mary yeah. Bookshop. I think it's like an independent. It looked independent. It was cute. I'm scared. Oh my god. Mine was more. Oh no. Mine was 19.99. Mine was cheaper. Oh. How was yours cheaper? Yours was bigger. Mine's bigger. Yeah. It's probably worse. Oh, that was cool. The Na The Nancys. Mm. Why have I never heard of this? I've never heard of either of these. It won something. I like the. Sort of that. Oh my god, mine's got a big description. Oh my god. Tippy Chan is 11 and lives in a small town in a very quiet part of the world. The place her uncle Pike escaped from, the first chance he got as a teenager. Now Pike is back with his new boyfriend, Devin. Oh, <gasps> Gay oh I'm in. To look after Tippy while her mum's on a cruise. This is a long, I'm not going to read all this. No. That's yeah. basically a novel in itself. There's just a lot of eyes. A lot of eyes everywhere. That's kind of cool though. Yeah. 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 It's, it's like, a oh, like nice pink. Yeah. Really strange eyes. Interesting that we've sense. never heard of either of these. No. Yeah. That's never. quite random. It, great that we don't already own them. Yeah. Gripping and it and wasn't on our ways. radar, which is what you want. Like, you don't really want to get a book that you have heard of. Yeah, and, that's and, like, true. Kind of know what you want, but damn, I've got so many books now to put God's in the sake. freaking suitcase. Which one are you going to read first out of all those? What are you most keen for? The, the Christmas one. Yeah, <laughs> like, I yeah. genuinely want all the yeah. Christmas stuff now. Halloween's not even over, but I'm ready to move on. Yeah. Ready Maybe on. you should do The Dark Academia. Yeah, I need to read this Halloween. by the end of November, so I have a deadline on this. Okay. So I probably should. It's just so floppy. Yeah, that. I love a floppy. Book. <laughs> I love a floppy. Floppy ice cream. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we had a lovely day today. Just like it out and about. Exploring the city. Exploring the city, having some drinks. Yeah. Uh, getting on the trams, which I love. I love the trams so much. That's yeah. one of the things I wish I had in my city, but I just don't. It's a quintessential it's Melbourne easy. experience getting on a tram. Yeah. You have to do it. And you, you told me to get on a tram the first day I got here as you well. Because yeah, it was free. <laughs> it would have been free. And I didn't. Yeah. I spent money. I <laughs> didn't Uber. It was just easier. That's yeah. the whole. And the, the blind date with the book, which is very interesting. Still feeling pretty blind. Yeah, oh my god. Uh, so we're probably just going to chill, watch a film later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Coco. And then sleep. <laughs> and then sleep. That's yeah. Cute. And if you see me being like very red, I, I just, I always sunburn. Always. I think it was the wine tour that got you. I think yeah, it, was it was the wine tour. It was very sunny yesterday. I didn't expect it no. to be that hot yesterday. No. So I didn't even put any, sun well actually all my sunscreen is in my luggage. Oh my God. Which yeah. I still don't have. That is wild. It's like two, day two now, isn't it? Day one, day three. 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 You still day have no luggage. Day three. You still have no luggage. <laughs> Damn, that just hit me. Day three or five. Like at this point you may as well just leave it until you go back. <laughs> Yeah, save you the trip. Yeah, I'll ring them up and I'll be like, is it okay to pick them up on Wednesday? Because I'm going to the hotel tomorrow anyway. I'll just buy a couple more essentials. I'll be fine. You just have to like repack it when you get there. That's the only thing. How are you going to get all your stuff to the airport? Oh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> 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 you're just glitch for a second. <laughs> yeah, I do need a suitcase to put, yeah. yeah. to put your things in. Yeah. I'll figure it out. I will figure it out. Okay, it is day four of six in Australia. 
and I'm finally going to be able to pick up my luggage today. But as I always say, when things don't go right, it's an adventure. So, oh, well, that clock's wrong anyway. But it is pretty early right now, and I'm going to get an Uber to the airport. Hopefully, it's just like easy sailing, picking up the luggage. It's going to be a little bit of a pain in the ass, because there's so much I want to do today. I want to do the book tour that Ellen has made for me, book and coffee tour. So I want to do that today. I want to visit someone who I met on Saturday on the wine tour and just make sure that I get back with like some fresh clothes, fresh underwear and feel human again. Yeah, best not waste any more time. Like the sooner I get there, the sooner I can leave. What a day, Alan Walker. What a day. <laughs> I'm so sad I missed it, but I'm happy for you. <laughs> I am too. So if you don't know what I've been doing today, which you probably won't, but I might have had like some little clips in from this morning because I was mm. like, I'm going to the airport. I'm picking up my luggage. Oh yeah. It's about time. The luggage debacle. It's day four of six. Well, yeah, something and like you that. Finally got underwear. Uh, and I, oh, I finally have underwear. I literally went commando yesterday because I was nice. like, cannot wear these underpants again. Yeah, that's fair. And I didn't want to buy more just to get my my yeah. own ones back. I've got plenty in there. So what's the point? <laughs> anyway, today, anyway. Uh, it, while Alan was at work, I went on the Alan Walker bookshop tour of Melbourne and I went to so many different places. It wasn't even just bookshops, but also like coffee shops as well. Yeah, because I know you like coffee and books. Uh -huh. I feel like we had to hit both and uh -huh. try to like alternate so you could have a coffee, get a book, have a coffee, get a book. And have you been to all these places yourself or was this just like research online? A bit of both. I think okay. I've been to all the bookshops okay. like over the years. I think right. there was a couple of coffee shops I hadn't been to yet, but like I heard good things and they were like in the right spots. And I think you picked, especially the first one, Tom Thumb, because so it's like a character name, right? Right, yeah, is exactly. It like, what is it? Is it Thumbelina and Tom Thumb? Uh, yeah, it is. Or something like that, I think yeah. So, yeah. And that was really nice, actually. It's like a really tiny kind of coffee shop yeah. and the coffee was so nice yeah. and it meant that I could take it with me to like the first bookshop, exactly. which was K. Craddock Antiquarian Bookseller PTY Limited. <laughs> <laughs> to be specific. <laughs> to be very specific. You don't a legal be, name. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be mixed up with something else. No, no, no. no. You don't want to end Easily. up in the wrong place. Uh, I couldn't get anything from that one because it was expensive. It's yeah, like yeah. secondhand, very rare books. Yeah, a bit more specialty. But cool yeah. Like yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, it was so beautiful. And the amount of children's books that were there yes. that were... You know, like probably like from the fifth, well, even before then, like even like Victorian period. Yeah. Because. So cool. Yeah, it's like the, you know, like the little hardbacks with the like really old school kind of illustrations, and they were just absolutely yeah. stunning. I didn't, I, I couldn't get anything. Yeah, no, that's so fair. I couldn't get so anything. Fair. But I know like middle grade is your thing. Yeah. Like, maybe that kind of area yeah. would be interesting. So I asked about that. I also asked, because she was lovely, like the lady who worked there, because I was asking about Agatha Christie books as well. Like, is there anything like old, like detective fiction mm. or anything? And there was like a nice little crime thriller kind of section as well, but Cute. they didn't have any Agatha Christie. Oh. I know. You think you think a, a bookshop like that would Never have something. Back there. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I am boycotting. <laughs> <laughs> and then I managed to get a chance to walk down because there's so many great sites to see mm -hmm. while I'm doing that as well. So many churches and like yeah. fountains. Yeah. And things like that were just absolutely lovely to like walk past. Yeah. I mean my phone was like gradually dying as that was <laughs> happening. Imagine. But yeah. you know, I managed to do the entire tour without it being fully dead. That's so good. I got like 17% and I was like, better get an Uber home. <laughs> That's the end of the day, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> That's the end. Yeah. Okay, bye bye. Yeah, it's a very um, beautiful city in terms of like architecture and stuff. So it's yeah. fun just to wander around. Oh my gosh, yeah. I didn't even realize this because a lot of the times when I've been looking around, it's been mainly high street kind of mm, look shopping. Like, yeah, yeah, stuff like that. But yeah. you know, it was lovely. And then I did manage to walk to Market Lane Coffee yes. on Collins Street. And that was very nice as well. I didn't actually get a coffee. Okay, though. that's right. I was thinking that you can't probably get a coffee in every one of these spots because you'd be like, Vibrating. Uh, I, I would <laughs> be a little bit hyper. But it's cute to see. Yeah. Back. And I was still satisfied from the one from Tom Thumb. Yeah. But it's still like a really nice place. I did still have like a little look see and uh, it is like such a good place for it as well in terms of like where yeah. other things are. Like you can't really walk a block without seeing a, a good coffee shop yeah. really. Yeah. But no, it looks nice. It's a Melbourne thing. Melbourne are very proud of their <laughs> coffee so you've got to do the rounds. As you should be. Mm -hmm. As you should be. It's wonderful. And then I did go to the Hill of Content. Yes. I don't know how to say that. Is it the hill of content or content? Con I don't know. I actually always thought of it as content. Content, yeah. But maybe that's just from working in social media. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. just says me. content. Yeah. But yeah, content makes sense. Content. Like your yeah. content about having yeah. a really good book, you know? Yeah. And they were lovely yeah. there as well. I was trying to take a little sneaky video of the bookshelves and the woman stopped. She's like, don't worry, I'm not going to I'm not gonna get oh, you a thing. But... And I was like, oh, you can if you want. <laughs> <laughs> that's all good. Get my book interview. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I did buy my first book. Welcome to the Hyunam Dong Bookshop by 
Wong Mo Rian. Very cozy. I really want to do like some kind of bookshop vlog where I read bookshop books and go to bookshops. Oh, <laughs> I love that. So <laughs> makes sense. This is Korean. So I'm very excited to dive into it because yeah, cover by total cover by. Yeah. Don't really know too much about it, but I was like, it doesn't matter. And I have seen it around before. I got that one from the first one. My very first book of the day. Oh. Because I was like, I'll just get one from each one because that'll be too much. Yeah. Obviously, I did not stick to that. <laughs> Pal's not looking like that. <laughs> I, did, I did not stick to one book per place. Yeah, 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 <laughs> and in the hill of content, I got the wonderful Wizard of Oz so tote bag. I was like, you know what? I'm going to buy books. I, I don't just buy my paper bags and stuff. That's a waste. That's a waste. That is a waste. You'll use this again. Also, why mm -hmm. are you wearing glasses? Is that a thing? Oh, yeah. In the Wizard of Oz book, um, it's so that, you know, when they go to the Emerald City, yeah. it's like too bright and you can't see oh, without it. Oh, I didn't know that. So, yeah, they wear the glasses in the original book. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Then, just nearby as well as the paperback yeah, bookshop. around the corner. Yeah, there was uh, scaffolding up the, uh, on there, mm -hmm. but it was getting taken down today. So oh, okay. they went in the process yeah, yeah. of taking that down. And that was like a really nice bookshop as well. It looked very Parisian inside. Yeah. It really reminded me of some of the bookshops I went to in Paris very last cozy. year. Yeah, and it it looked, yeah. Like very stacked. Yeah. Like the bookshops are stacked and quite yeah. high as well. And I saw there was like quite a really good horror selection too. There was some that looked really, really weird. There was one that was called, I think, Unnatural Sex or something. Oh, and it like on the my section. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> the book of it, it kinda looked a little bit like this actually. But like it was a oh. visage. It was a visual. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah. At least I think so. Like a kind of artsy, artistic yeah, style. Yeah, that makes sense. And I was looking to see if I could find like some good Goodreads reviews on them. Yeah. And a lot of them were kind of like terrible. Like, Fair But enough. the book that I did buy from there, it was on the staff recommendations table. And that was What Happens at Night by Peter Cameron. And I thought, why not? Because if yeah. they're recommending it, yeah, I yeah. love a staff recommendation. Oh my god, same. the best thing about bookshops. Especially those little independent ones. I feel like they like go harder on them and it means more. Yeah, literally. And this was probably out of all of them, the like best rated on Goodreads. Yeah, like it had a bit of a higher rating than the other ones. Yeah. And a lot of the people who didn't like this one said it was because it was weird. And I like weird. Oh, like, yeah. I like weird fiction and stuff. That's not a bad stuff. thing. No, definitely not. It just wasn't for a lot of people. Yeah. That's fine. But I'm hoping to like it because I love atmosphere. I think yeah. it's very like noir-esque as well. So sign me up. Fun. Sign me. Sign me. Fuck up. <laughs> oh, I did uh, have more walks. More walking. My feet okay. are fucking killing me. Yeah, I kind of made you go around the whole city. I'm sorry about that. No, like it's a really good, like kind of a loop thing. Yeah, so yeah. like you are hitting the places. You're seeing the places as you're going to. <laughs> but then, yeah, I went to oh Manchester Press for lunch. Oh, so good. and you've been there. I've been there. Oh yeah, it's it was so good. It was very nice. Yeah. Very nice. Although when I walked in, like there was a strong smell of pepper. Oh, okay. Was it like black pepper or something? I was like, I wanted to sneeze. <laughs> it's so random. It was a little bit random. Did but... you find it okay? Because it's kind oh, of hidden yeah. a bit. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Way. No, no. Okay. I, I managed to use Google Maps. I was okay. I was absolutely fine. Yeah, but it was nice and hidden, actually. And it was yeah. like a very beautiful location, yeah. too. And I had a table for one just in the oh. little corner. I had a cappuccino, of course, all yeah. milk. And a chicken, avocado, mayo, Yum. kind of toasty thing with a yeah. side salad. Food's good there. And I did actually manage, where is my book? Butter. Is butter there? Where is butter? Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. So I took my book as well because I thought let's get some reading done. Mm -hmm. And I did read some more butter. Oh, and yeah, great. I'm still really enjoying it and I'm understanding it more now as well. Yeah. Because I keep describing it as she eats this recipe from the person in jail who was convicted of killing these men. Mm -hmm. And you kind of don't know if she actually did because they all look like they unalived themselves. But like she was always dating them at the time and she... Suspicious. Yeah, it's very <laughs> suspicious. But like I thought it was the main character. She would get recipes from her, eat them and start changing yeah. herself. It's not quite like that right now. So Kaji is the one who was in jail. And she's telling Rika, oh, go to this restaurant, order specifically this. Yeah. And come back and tell me exactly how it tasted. Like tell me everything. So it's almost as if Rika is like acting for her on the outside. And... <laughs> The last one was really weird actually. She went, make sure you have sex before you go. In between 3 and 4 a.m., you go to this ramen place, order specifically this, ask for lots, lots of butter, and come back to me. Makes sense. So it, like, oh, now it's getting like, a little bit strange, a little bit weird, and I'm still liking it though. It's kind of fitting to read that while you're out somewhere having lunch. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it is. Bit in the story. I, I should have went, went and got ramen. You should have. <laughs> That's my fault. I did specify where to have lunch. <laughs> I should have known. No, I loved it. Good. Oh, and then I did go to the State Library, which, funnily oh. enough, my friend Christian Jones, she mentioned this oh, today. Yeah. She mentioned this today. She oh, sent me a DM. She was like, oh my God, I didn't realize you were in Australia. And I was like, yep, I am. And she was like, oh, you need to go to the State Library. It's, it's so pretty. So beautiful, isn't it? So pretty. So it's I went gorgeous. inside. Gorgeous. Like, even the outside of it as well. It's yeah. like all the columns and yeah. everyone eating outside. And it's just like such a nice atmosphere as well. Yeah. 
I really loved it. It's if, beautiful. If I could, I would go at that library yeah. all the time. It'd be great to like go just to read or to take mm. the laptop, do some work there, like do some oh. editing. It's well, that's what you need to do. You need yeah, to do I know. I say it all the time. I'm like, one day I'm just going to come here and read. Never do it. But the thought's there. Yeah. Make yeah. you do it instead. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the main thing. <laughs> yeah. So I did actually end up getting three books from the little bookshop that's there as well. I think Cute. It's like, is it called like reading or like there's like a... Yeah, I think... Reading Readings? Like reading. I think reading. that is a chain of books. Oh, okay. But there's like one specifically in the... Yeah, library. in the la yeah. in the actual library. Yeah. Which was like so cool. And I did pick up three. I was only going to pick up one. I was going to pick up the Full Moon Coffee Shop. Full also a cute shop. cover. Mm -hmm. I think this one is, yeah, Japanese okay. bestseller. So Japanese translated by Mei Mokizuki and translated by Jessica Kirkwood. And I have seen this around before as well. And I'm thinking of doing a vlog where I buy coffee bookshops and go to coffee, shop, uh, coffee shops. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> of course, it's got cats on the cover as well. Yeah. So. Oh, and you bought the one yesterday. Mm. What was the one you bought yesterday that's about... Coffee cats, uh, co cats and coffee shop. Where are my books from yesterday? Where are they? Where are they? Oh, they're here. They're, they're <laughs> oh, I'm just, uh, so <laughs> before the coffee gets cold. Oh, before the coffee gets cold. That's also set in a cafe. Oh, yeah. So okay. you've already got a collection. I'll read that one as well then for Stunning. that vlog. I uh, also got Graveyard Shift by Emma Rio. Very excited to read this because I read If We Were Villains. Really enjoyed it. Yeah, it's a cool cover. And it's tiny. Yeah. So it's beautiful. Love that. And then the first manga of the day I got Ali by Junji Ito. This is not for me. <laughs> this <No>. is terrifying. <laughs> this is Junji Ito. Is a Scary yeah, I can not see that. I hate it, but I I'm happy it. for you. I, I don't want it. I don't want to not see for it. Me, but you go for it, Queen. Yeah, I don't think there's anything. Oh, that's your last. Spoilers. Oh. <laughs> it yeah. doesn't look as bad inside. The outside looks terrifying. Yeah, I feel like sometimes it does go all out for the covers, but yeah, I love Junji Ito so much. And then I did go to Brick Lane Coffee, but they were closed. They were oh, closed. But Lane, I, out. I know, right? But I did go up the alley and. Oh my god, it was so beautiful as well because there were yes. so many plants. Yeah. So many plants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Graffiti, Gorgeous. but like really like beautiful graffiti as well. Like yeah. On the on the buildings. And but it's yeah, all so like nice. brick as the name suggests. Yeah. Oh, oh, there's a few cafes around there, right? I think yeah, in the alleyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good spot. It is a very good spot. You like going there? Or? Yeah, I've been there a couple of times. So I did <laughs> go to it wasn't part of the book tour because we went yesterday. We did. And yes. it was called what again, Dixon's? Dimmix. Dimmix. Yeah, Dimmix. Dimmix. Which is like the biggest bookshop chain in Australia, I would say. Yeah, uh, so yeah. I would have already had clips from uh, being there. Yes. Maybe with music, maybe not. Maybe I might do a, a cover of yeah. some hit song. Yeah, maybe we'll do a duet. Mm. I don't know. Babe, I got you. Is that Easy. I got you, babe. No, babe, I got you. <laughs> 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 Wrong way around. Yeah, kind of, but yeah. Wrong way around. <laughs> because there wasn't really like very much manga in the other places, because seeing in the library bookshop, I was like, I just realised these um, places don't really have a lot of manga. Yeah, that's surprising. But I did end up getting four mangas from... Dimmix. Dimmix, Dimmix. Dimmix. <laughs> I'll never time. remember. I'll never remember. I picked up Cat Gamer Volume 1, because I've heard great things about it. And I do want to do a vlog where I read cat books. <laughs> and I decided to pick up volumes that I needed from okay. a series that I'm already reading. Yeah. Uh, so I got One Piece Volume 106, obviously, my favourite thing ever. I will get Ellen to read it. I yep. will. One day. One day. <laughs> Spy Family Volume 12. I think that's on Netflix. Yeah, that rings a bell. I think yeah. you're right. Yeah, it's so good. So, so good. And also Wish I Had you, Volume 12. So that was the final volume that I needed today. Wow. I mean, I could always do it with more, but I was like, this is my limit. This is too much. I kept getting, um, you've used your contact list too much today. So I keep up my card in. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. It's going to be over your weight limit as well with a suitcase. With all these books. Uh, well, I'm going to send them off tomorrow, I think. What okay. I'm going to do is I'm going to find a post office and put them in a box and send them. Shut them off. Yeah. Good idea. And that's the tour. I will leave the <laughs> thing on the top. She's going to as she's walking away. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Hello. Come down. Well, well, well. Well. You can hear everything through that door. Can you? Like, you can just hear you guys chatting. Like, I'm not even like loud, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah just like normal chatting. Yeah. I think mine's the same actually, because when I'm in the corridor, I'm like, I can hear people's. Yeah. yeah. I was touching. Gavin, what have you done today? Oh, what did, did you do, Gavin? I did, I did a lot of damage. You did some, yeah, damage. But like, this was, you know, the thing, and then I added one more bookshop on there. Yeah. So. He's kept the bookshops of Melbourne running for another year, I guess. Literally. That's them in business. What did you get then? Well, you're gonna have to watch the tour grades. Oh. <laughs> Whoa, I nearly, nearly fell. <laughs> Ellen has taken me thrifting. Yay! I need clothes. We thought it would be a fun opportunity while he's here to thrift together 
and see if I can thrift him a fun little outfit. Oh, no. Men's section, it's not somewhere I usually frequent. No, but I will for you, darling. Uncharted territory. Uncharted. We're killing it over those drinks. We actually are. How long do we have? Oh, we've got like, I can't count, 37 minutes? <laughs> also, Grace was just like walking past, just like. <laughs> so we have 20 minutes to try everything on. All of the uh, outfit choices, all the combinations. Why do you look straight right now? <laughs> Maybe I'm dressing you as a straight man, accidentally. Gavin Straightington. That is, that is straight, Gavin. This is your Halloween costume, a straight man. <laughs> Look at all of these. Damn. Annie get life. I'm home. And then the other agency kind of wrapped up the meeting and they were like, Yeah, let's do that. It's a bit nippy this morning. Quite cold, very cloudy, not long walking up, and I'm gonna head off to Hello Sparrow, the coffee shop and hopefully do some reading. I really want to finish this today. I have a lot of free time while Ellen and Grace are at work, so I can just do what I want and stuff like that. I do want to go to the post office and try and send a lot of these books off home because there's no way, there's no chance it's fitting in my luggage for Egypt. So I want to stay in this area today, I think. But yeah, I'm so glad I got my suitcase so I've got jumpers because I could not wear a t-shirt today. I'm gonna use my Wizard of Oz tote bag today. So let's put it in. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, 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 this is not smooth. It's fine. Uh, okay, it's in. Let's go. Okay, time to try and pack as much of that in as I can. And I might actually take some of them with me to Egypt, potentially. Because there might be something I might, like graveyard shift I might take with me. It's quite small. Maybe a monger as well, just to break things up a bit. Oh, and I still need to read The Beetle. But yeah, none of that, and none of the clothes I've really bought, are gonna fit in there. Like, absolutely not. I need to make a list of all the things I'm putting in as well. So I need to remember, and then I can also fill it in online. But if I write everything down first, then that's that's great. You know, I'll probably put some jumpers and things on the bottom to make it cushiony. You know, instead of bubble wrap, I'll use my jumpers. Oh my god, I really hope. I see that's why I take up so much space. <laughs> I don't think this is gonna be big enough. Okay, maybe I won't send all the books away. So if I keep like these ones that I mentioned. You know what, and I know I got this from that blind date with the book, but I'm just genuinely not interested in it. So I might donate this to the hotel bookcase downstairs. Cause yeah, I'm sorry, I just know I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna read it. I need to be strict, and this is like the smallest book as well. <laughs> like if I was gonna leave any of them, it really should have been one of the bigger ones. We're doing a little cheeky unhaul. Uh, and about this jumper as well. I think of this one. The one I wore when I came. There's three jumpers in the bottom there already. This coffee from Hello Sparrow, though, 10 out of 10. All right, books, 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 books. Everybody. So we're gonna try and put in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 books. Now you write down what, how much they're worth? Damn, this is gonna come up to way too much. I wonder if the jumpers will make it feel lighter because it'll be surrounding the, the box. Maybe, I don't know. That's probably not a thing. Bring down the value, let's try and fit them in. Oh, this is so cool. Okay, so they fit, they fit. And I have enough room still for some more clothes. Four jumpers. <laughs> and I might also put my coat in here as well. Let's see if this fits. Hey, it fits! Oh. <laughs> oh god, it feels quite heavy. Oh, that's gonna cost a lot of money. That's gonna, why did I do it? Uh, no, that looks good! Yay! We're gonna put this on the shelf. <laughs> Gorgeous. 
gorgeous. Do you want some like full outfit ones as well? Sure, like, why not? Just like, if I record it, then I can just like yeah. edit the clips together or something. You know what I mean? Choose what you want. Love. Damn. Yeah, it's a man's world. Man, he just flipped off the back. <laughs> and we never saw him again. Damn. And that was the end of Gavin Hetherington. Yeah, Gavin reads it all. And we'll do something a little bit closer. Oh, oh my God, I like the walk. Well, this is impossible to close. Have you seen it? Okay. I need to rethink this. And the same thing happened in Japan. I could not get it closed. In fact, I broke the suitcase in Japan when I tried to squish it in. And I've been at this for like half an hour. It's been about half an hour since I came back from the final hurrah with Ellen and Grace, which I'll talk more about in the morning. I just don't know if this is happening. I'm like, should I leave? a couple of things I brought with me that I don't really, really need. I'll make it work. I'm so dumb. I forgot to put all of my bathroom stuff in here last night. So I've had to reopen it and I'm trying to get it closed again. <laughs> Come on. Oh, this is so not gonna pass the, uh, the weight that I'm allowed. Ah, uh, 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 that wasn't too bad. Perfect. Okay, what time is it? It is 8.30 a.m. I'm gonna get the Uber any minute now. Oh, I need to tell you guys, I am now, I didn't finish. I am now 263 pages into butter. And again, like not that much more I can tell you about it because it is just a lot of eating, a lot of character reflection. It's very character heavy, very character backstory heavy. And in terms of plot, it is moving at like a slow pace, but I don't mind it. It's just like, this isn't the vibe I'm going for right now. So I'm gonna stop reading this for now because I need to read Where the River, What the River, What the River Knows by Isabel Ibanez, I believe. I need to start that now. So I have two flights I now need to catch. I have one from Melbourne to Shanghai, which is about nine and a half hours. And then from Shanghai to Cairo, it is 12 and a half hours. <sighs> I have never in my life been on a flight that long before. And my feet, I don't think can take it. My left foot ankle is fine. My right foot ankle is not that nice. And I think it's because of the flying so like, Yeah. And that happened in Japan as well, except I got cellulitis as well. This is just, I think, from flying here, and my right ankle just doesn't want to go down. So I do apologize for the uh, for the feet. I'm sure I'll be fine. I'm gonna get some compression socks from the airport. Hopefully they've got some, they should have some. And hopefully it's not gonna be bad when I get to Egypt. Because I can't be having this, I haven't even started my trauma trip yet. I'm the host, and I'm gonna be out. I'm gonna be out for the count, not being able to walk like I did in the very last day of Japan. It was so painful, my last day in Japan. But don't worry, we love the adventure, we love the high stakes of it all. Last night, I went to a place called Harvey with Grace and Ellen. It was our final hurrah here in Melbourne. I'm gonna have to come back because I already miss them. But yeah, we had some cocktails, a little something to eat, and it was just lovely just sitting there chatting, watching the Melbourne skyline and everything. It was so nice, it was so nice. Uber, 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 ah. Let's see if I can get a good Uber. I hope I put in the right terminal. But Melbourne, it's been a pleasure. Bye Melbourne. Bye bye. I'll be back soon Melbourne. Oh shit, he's outside.